going to start. I'm going to start. Good morning. morning. May the grace of Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us as we gather for worship on this Lord's Day, both here and online. Welcome, wherever you are in your journey of faith and life, we affirm you. It is the ninth day of Christmas. It's also the feast of St. Basil, who lived in the fourth century with his friend, St. Gregory, who were known for their preaching that the essence of God is a relationship of love, a relationship of love, something it bears remembering for today. There was the drawing for the raffle yesterday, the, the steeplechase raffle, and if you missed it, the $1,000 prize went to Anne O'Brien and also to Peter Abisher. The $2,000 prize went to someone who appears to have a last name of Reardon. And unfortunately, the last digit on their phone number was illegible, so we are going to be locating Mr. or Miss Reardon, and we have pretty good, pretty good clues about how to find them. So congratulations to them. The $5,000 prize went to Bob and Chickie McCall, and the grand prize of $10,000 went to Bill and Diane Beardsley of Kutchog. And I hope they don't mind, but I want to say thank you to Bill and Diane because they donated half of it back to the Steeple Fund. Thank you very much. Thank you all for your contributions and your help with the Steeple. Um, thank you also for your forbearance and your patience with our new protocols. Uh, we will be continuing with hybrid worship, recording and live on Facebook and in person for those who are comfortable coming. The mask mandate remains. We have added the um, seating arrangements for every other pew to encourage distancing. We will continue to sanitize and the air blowers are on with the ultraviolet scrubber. And we will keep you posted as things change. We're um, in what, what I refer to as the next normal, not the new normal, but the next normal, which will be followed by another next normal. And we will continue working together and staying together and helping each other and loving our neighbor as best we can. Um, let's see. So the Tuesday lunch is on pause for now. Discovering the Bible will take place this week on Tuesday at 7 p.m. Um, for now, it's hybrid, which means you can come in digitally on Zoom or come into the sanctuary live. We'll keep you posted about that. It's never too late to join the Bible study, Discovering the Bible. We still have some books if you'd like to jump in. Um, you're never missing anything, and any session that you make will make you a stronger Christian and help you get to know your fellow Southhold Presbyterians. Um, we're planning to undecorate the sanctuary here on Saturday at 10 a.m. if you'd like to come and lend a hand. Confirmation will meet next Sunday after worship. And today is communion. Here in the church you have your elements. If you're worshiping with us online, I invite you to pause and gather your elements and uh, so that you'll be ready to partake when we partake together. And don't be stingy because grace is big. Have I forgotten anything? I don't think I forgot anything. Now we will continue to invoke the light of Christ as I light the candles on the communion table. And we remember the incarnation and the nativity as the advent candles are illumined one more time. Let us pray. Loving God, 
the word made flesh. A word from your mouth brings about the very creation in all its wonder and beauty and brings us our salvation. As we gather to worship you, to hear your word and be refreshed and renewed by your spirit, come and be with us. We pray in your name. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. It is my honor to be able to wish you both of those things in one Sunday because we missed celebrating last Sunday. But it's a pleasure to be the first thing, the first liturgist on the uh, New Year agenda. As I look back, I know we're looking forward to the New Year and all the good things that will happen. But I always, at this time of year, like to look back and I think about my dearly departed parents and how my mother would bring me to church every Sunday with her. And my, I had three older brothers who were extremely willful and a father who was an organist, a very fine organist, but if he wasn't playing the organ, he never went to church. So my mother and I would go together and church was her safe place. She would sit in the pew and I would be next to her and occasionally she would cry. She always had a used tissue in her pocket to summon up so that she could, you know, compose herself. Every once in a while she had a new one that was crumpled. And I always thought when I was little that she was crying because she had such a terrible voice. <laughs> when the singing of the hymns happened, people would look at us because her voice was so terrible. <laughs> and I tried to make her feel better. I said, don't worry, Mom, I'll, I'll cover it up for you. <laughs> I think that's probably why I became a musician. Anyway, as a, we grew older, and I grew older, I realized that she was crying because she had some problems. And church was the place where she could unload and pray and hope for good things and solve problems for herself and for our family. And it was a very, very important part of our time together. I'll never forget those moments of sitting at church and looking up at her crying. And of course, when she died, my sister-in-law said, she's got all these coats in, in every pocket. It's like a, a bunch of tissues, like all balled up. I said, don't touch them. That is our wailing wall. <laughs> but uh, it's a pleasure, pleasurable memory of her, and it's a pleasurable memory of church, and I hope that our prayers are all answered this year, just as I think her prayers were answered during her lifetime. Please join me in the call to worship in the, found in your bulletin. A new day has dawned, a new year begun. Oh, the Lord, call us so we may hear your voice. The world turns to hopes and dreams of the future. Oh, oh Lord, keep us in your ways and on your path. Help us enter this new year with hope and excitement. Oh, oh Lord, remind us that you lead us. Oh, Lord, guide us as we look to you and worship you. We'll now sing hymn number 67, verses 1 and 2.
abounding in steadfast love, we are invited to join together in our prayer of confession, printed, printed in bulletin. Let us pray. Gracious God, we seek to open ourselves to you in this moment and in this hour of worship. We know all too well the failures and limitations that bring us to our knees and into your presence. Our prayer this morning is that your Holy Spirit would cause us to look beyond failure and limitation so that we might accept your mercy and forgiveness as the way forward. Let your Spirit work in us to make us more aware of the new creation that comes about because of your relentless love. In Christ we pray. Amen. There are six things God wants you to know. God sees you. God hears you. God protects you. God forgives you. God is with you. And God loves you. All of it is proven in the gift and love of Christ. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel in Jesus Christ. We are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Please look around at your neighbors and share the passing of the peace. I'd like to read the Old Testament lesson, which is Psalm 147, starting with verse 12, uh, page 716 in your pew Bibles. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion, for he strengthens the bars of your gates. He blesses your children within you. He grants peace within your borders. He fills you with the finest of wheat. He sends out his command to the earth. His word runs swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters frost like ashes. He hurls down hail like crumbs. Who can stand before his cold? He sends out his word and melts them. He makes his wind blow and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and ordinances to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know his ordinances. Praise the Lord. Getting a blinking light. I'm getting a blinking light, which I think means the battery's getting low. But I wanted to share a story that Marguerite, you inspired me further with your story about your mother. This is not about my mother, kind of. She was a teacher though, so I couldn't get away with anything in school. Um, but I remember vividly this time of year, every year, back then there weren't MacBooks or Chromebooks. We were writing a lot more. And every first week of the year, I would forget and forget that the new year had changed. And I kept writing the old year and I'd have to erase it or cross it out until I finally learned that, oh yeah, it's a new year, I have to write a new number. And I'm sure there are students in elementary school who are going to be doing that, not necessarily with a pencil, but with your, your Chromebook or your notebook computer, having to make yet another change. We've all had to make changes so many times in this last year or so or more, but the good news is I know we can do it. I remember that I had to adapt every new year in school to many, many things. And that's the one good thing, the many good things, but one good thing that God has given us is the ability to adapt. And that comes directly from God and directly from God's Spirit. So as we enter this new year with new challenges and new opportunities, remember we do not enter the year alone. We enter the year, year with God's presence and the ability to adapt. Amen. Amen. Now we read from Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus from the first 
chapter, verses 11 through 14. Let us open ourselves to God's word in scripture. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we who were the first to set our hope on Christ might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance for redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. So ends this a reading of God's word in scripture. May God bless it to our understanding. So from a sibling in the faith at the Mattituck Presbyterian Church, I recently learned of a book for church officers, and it's titled, Selected to Serve, A Guide for Church Leaders. It's written by Earl S. Johnson. And right in the very beginning of this book, he states an astonishing and undeniable reminder. In the first three pages, he says this, when Jesus called the 12 disciples, quote, those whom he desired, he gave them three special assignments, only three. Preach the gospel, heal the sick, and number three, be with him. Be with him. Okay, first two, not a big surprise. Amen. We all know the phrase, preach the gospel, Use words if necessary. Heal the sick. Yes, indeed. Amen. Third one. Be with him. Be with him. Now, I can boast I'm a cradle Presbyterian. I'm a highfalutin Presbyterian. And we tend to engage the gospel from the neck up. You know what I mean by that? intellectually, scholarly, thoughtfully. That's at once a strength and also a vulnerability. Be with him. Be with him. I'm going to be Captain Obvious for a moment. We live in a volatile, unpredictable, complex, and ambiguous time. I'm going to repeat that. We live in a volatile, unpredictable, complex, and ambiguous time. We inhabit an unprecedented time of unpredictable change. That's me being Captain Obvious. So, he looks around at the disciples, and he says to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. Sound familiar? Coming and going, no leisure even to eat. And they went away in a boat to a deserted place by themselves. Many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. And as Jesus goes ashore, he sees this great crowd, and he has compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Like sheep without a shepherd. And he had compassion on them. Be with him. Be with him. Do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Because Reverend Johnson has it right. Do you know Jesus? Can you hear the melody? It doesn't have to be a John Philip Sousa piece. It could be a still small voice, but can you hear it? Maybe contemporary rock for some, maybe soft rock for others, but can you hear it? Can you hear his voice? Do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus at some level? Is there a relationship there? Is there a spark there? Maybe I'll shift metaphors. Maybe I'll talk about the dance floor at a wedding reception. 
can you get on the dance floor? Now, some people are, you know, Saturday Night Fever, right? You've seen them. You've seen them. All, there's always one, one couple. And there's another couple. They took the dancing lessons, and they're just gliding around in ways that I'll never be able to do. Then maybe there's the, uh, you've seen this one too, the, the deadhead. They're like on the edge, and they're just, they're just kind of, you know. Like but they're on the dance floor, right? Got to give them credit. They're on the dance floor. You got to be on the dance floor. Do you know Jesus? You gotta be on the dance floor. Somewhere. Doing your thing. Danced a little too much. <laughs> if we're gonna meet the challenges before us, we need to be with him. We need to be with him. And cultivate and carve out opportunities to get to know him personally. For some, this is a very natural, normal, comfortable challenge. For others, maybe not. I understand. Did you know Jesus is the first responder? The first first responder? Watch him. Look at him. He runs toward and not away from people and situations we tend to avoid. Do you know Jesus? Spent a lot of time in prayer. I mean, he, he had the direct connection. Even he spent a lot of time in prayer. Do you know Jesus is always on the move? Remember Easter? He's not here. He's out ahead of you. Find him. Not practicing ministry by doing what was always done in the past, looking through the rearview mirror. You ever try to drive your car by looking through the rearview mirror? It can't be done. Church, we've got to stop driving by the rearview rear mirror. Do you know Jesus? He's always on the move, and he's on the move again. Do you know Jesus wants us to put our people in touch with him, equip them to go out on their own personal journey with him? That's the business of the church. Do you know Jesus wants us to forget about worship attendance? It's no longer a linear equation. It's about helping people connect and engage, both here and online. I know somebody's going to watch worship sometime today from Florida, as they do every week. And my, oh my, have we pivoted in at least the last 18 months, if not longer. We partnered with CAST to provide lunches for families, dinners for families, feed-a-kid programs, storing a lot of their supplies. We opened up our own little free pantry, and my, what a sign it is for the community. It's always being emptied, and you are always filling it. You are an amazing congregation in your generosity. Maureen's Haven had to shut down, then open back up with their staff and us helping differently. Then we shifted days. Do you know how many times you have pivoted just this last year and how to provide meals, how to deliver them over there? Blessings to you, Cheryl. Amen. You provided Christmas for families 230 miles away and families in this community through Family Service League. You are amazing. You are amazing to watch. And look at what we've done. Providing worship for those who come in here, for those who tune in. Increasing by a hundredfold our digital presence on social media and outreach. Do you know Jesus is out there? waiting, beckoning, inviting, and we're following him. We've got to get even bigger, being his hands and his feet and his voice and his heart. We've got our work cut out for us. But as we reinvent, as we innovate, as we evaluate, yes, 
It's a little scary. It's also kind of exciting. And we're not alone. So come to the table. However you come to the table today, be fed, be nourished, be refreshed, be prepared to go out there because we know Jesus will be with us. I hope we find a way to believe that so deeply in our hearts, it's never but a breath away. May it be so. Amen. 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 Affirmation of faith, which is found in your bulletin. What is the great and first commandment? Love, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. What is the second commandment? Love your neighbor as yourself. What does this mean? Love is fulfilling what God expects of us. To what does this call us? To a life of faith and action through love. May it be so. Amen.
Let us pray. Gracious God, some shepherds and some wise ones were an unlikely group to visit the King of Kings and the Prince of Peace and offer their presence and their gifts. And so we may at times feel like an unlikely group with our gifts and our presence, but we know you accept all and you bind us together by your spirit with these gifts that we are offering. And you offer through these gifts instruments of your presence, your mercy, your love, and your peace. And so we dedicate ourselves to you with these gifts and our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. According to the governing body of this congregation, this table is an open table, which means all who have placed their trust in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and who are sincerely attempting to follow in his ways are welcome here. The table of bread and cup is now made ready. It is the table of company with Jesus and all who love him. It is the table of sharing with the poor of the world because it is the poor with whom Jesus identified himself. It is the table of communion with the earth in which Christ became incarnate. So come to this table, you who have much faith. Come to this table, you who would like to have more. Come to this table, you who have been here often. Come to this table, you who have not been for a long time. Come to this table, you who have tried to follow Jesus. Come to this table, you who have failed you will find good company. Come, for it is Jesus Christ who invites us to meet him here. I invite you to join with me in the litany of the great thanksgiving you find printed in your bulletin. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Holy and embracing God, for through your word all things came into being, and without you not one thing was made. As your word spoke through your covenant, you created a people bound and connected to you. Through promise and pardon, slavery and exile, you show that what had come into being through you was life. Your, promise, your prophets promised that life as a light for all people, and spoke of a day of comfort and redemption when ruins and waste places would break forth into song. When that day came and the word became flesh, your angels sang for joy and put a new song into our hearts. God of glory, make your church a sign of newborn hope in your kingdom. Be born anew in us today where your children are faced with ruin Show them redemption. Where sorrow endures, bring your holy comfort. Where division excludes, give your grace. Where bondage confines, sing your new expansive song of love. Restore our hope in you until that day when all that you have brought into being finds its everlasting destiny in the glory of your only Son, when nothing in heaven or on earth falls outside your redeeming purpose, and when all things shall be full of grace and truth in you, in whose name we pray, giving back to you this prayer you taught us to remember. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the glory, and the glory forever. Amen.
According to the holy institution of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in remembrance of him, we do this. For in the night in which our Savior was betrayed, he took the bread in the presence of the disciples, and he blessed it, and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, broken for you. Do this again in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup and held it before them and said, Behold, this cup represents the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of your sins. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the mystery of the saving death of the risen Christ until he comes again. And so all of us are invited to partake. The bread of heaven, the cup of the new covenant. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks that you do not withhold, but you give generously, lovingly, scandalously, you give, always, of yourself, sacrificially and lovingly. Thank you. Make us your bold and generous followers in this time and in this place. Having been so graciously fed, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As this worship experience comes to its close, know that you are an indispensable part of the body of Christ and this communion of believers. May the Lord look upon you with kindness. May the Lord fill your heart with holy peace. God's love be forever within you. May the Lord always bless and keep you. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.